Hello, welcome to this week's program of Study the Word. Every week this is brought to you by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets in Newburgh, Indiana. It's 5600 Van Road, which is two miles east of Castle High School and just 10 minutes from I-69. It's not that far, easy to find. We'd love to have you come and be with us. If you want to check out directions, go to our website. And uh, not only can you find our times of services and our directions, but we also stream our services live. You can check out our past TV programs that we upload onto our site also. And so we hope you'll take advantage of that. Please remember the phone number that, you, that will appear at the bottom of your screen throughout the program. We'd love to hear from you. We have heard from a number of folks recently who have been watching this program for many years. Uh, one couple recently said they've been watching it every week for three years. They finally built up the courage to give us a call. We got together, studied, and uh, now everything is great. And so, and, and that, that happened about a month ago with somebody else and uh, who've been watching the TV program. And folks, it's time for you to call. You've been watching, you've been dedicated viewers, you've learned a lot, and now it would be good to say, let's get together. Call the number, leave a message, and I'll get back to you and uh, we'll go from there. And so we hope you enjoy our program today as we continue on with our series that we started a few weeks ago on what are the acts of worship? What did the Christians do in the first century? And we pointed out that there are five acts of worship and we've already studied three of them. We noticed that the Christians came together on the first day of the week. They took the Lord's Supper and, and that was every week. They, they sang and um, then they gave, and we studied that last week. We give on the first day of the week for the work of the church to carry out the duties there. Well, what are we going to talk about this week? What's the fourth one in, in the areas of worship that are authorized within the Word of God? Well, when you open up your Bibles and you read about the early church, you'll find that when they came together on a regular basis, there was preaching. Now we can find a lot of examples. Let me give you the one that we used in connection with the Lord's Supper. In Acts chapter 20 and in verse 7 it says, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. So there is preaching. And that's important. Now, we want to make this program last a half hour, which will be easy to do. We could just say, well, there's preaching, and that's it. Let's go on to the next point. No, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the preaching of God's Word. When Christians came together, there was the singing, and of course, there was the giving and the Lord's Supper. Now, the preaching was an essential part of the worship. And since it's an act of worship, Remember, we're there to worship God, John chapter 4, and verse 24. One of the things we've been putting, pointing out the last few weeks is that the problem that exists in the religious realm today, and it's nothing new, of course, and that is people are trying to make worship for themselves rather than for God. And when that happens, we get away from the Scriptures. I like the way Paul admonished a young preacher what he was supposed to do when it came to preaching. In um, 2 Timothy, okay, we're going to be over in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and here's what Paul tells this young evangelist to remember, which I wish all preachers would remember, and I need to be constantly be reminded of this. Verse 2 of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul said to Timothy, preach the word. Preach the word. You know, we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You know, what's happening in pulpits across the land is those feel-good sermons. People preach in their philosophies. They become great theologians. Matter of fact, a lot of them become entertainers. They'll get up there and they'll talk about you know, they'll tell this joke and then that joke. I know uh, this one guy likes to get on TV. He says, well, let me start out with a funny story. He wants to tell a joke. 
Why? Oh, you want to entertain your audience. Now Paul told Timothy, look, you just get up and preach the word. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, If any man speak, let him speak by the oracles of God. We have people getting up in the pulpits and preaching their opinions. You hear that time and time again. And you have people getting up and preaching things that are not right. They're twisting the scriptures. They're, not, they're taking passages out of their context. And they're teaching false doctrine. That's why the brethren were warned in the first century. In, in uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, test the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. You know, you as listeners have a responsibility. Yes, I've been talking about preaching and how that preachers need to preach the word. But what's interesting is I, I read this story over in Acts chapter 18 of a couple who were following Jesus and they were listening to somebody preach. Just like you may be listening to somebody preach. Notice what happens here. In Acts chapter 18, it says in verse 24, Now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man being instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So when he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Now don't you love that? You hear people listening to the Word of God spoken and notice that there was something wrong in what was being taught. That tells me that the hearer has a responsibility. When you go to God, or excuse me, when you go and worship God and you're listening to the preaching and something isn't right, do you think, well, it's not my place to question? Do you realize that if you listen to false doctrine, that your worship is in vain. There is such thing as vain worship, and we talked about that in our first lesson on this series. Because a lot of people seem to think that if you, you know, if you worship, then that's that's all that matters. God just cares that you worship Him. He doesn't care how you do it. Well, that's not true. We find here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus quoted. He said. Uh, these people draw near to me with their mouth, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of man. So there's such thing as vain worship. It doesn't accomplish anything. So for you to be listening to false doctrine, it's just wrong. You know, the couple that called me up a, a couple weeks ago just said, Chuck, you know, is there a church that stays with the Bible that is near our home? because they live about an hour from here. And I did point them out to a place that they could attend. And they're, they're happy now. Um, they, they, they've served, they served the Lord. They became Christians. And, and what a wonderful thing it is. And folks, because they understood, and, and I remember when I was in their home, they said, man, we went to this place, Chuck, and, and they were teaching false doctrine. And they went to another place, and they were teaching false doctrine. I've been in studies with people that have been watching this TV program that have gone to so many different religious groups looking for the truth. And they were getting frustrated. And they called. And we pointed them in the right direction. See, the point that we're talking about today when it comes to worship, one of the acts of worship is preaching. But it has to be sound preaching. It has to be preaching that is in accordance with the Word of God. Like Paul told Timothy, he told him, preach the Word. Now, it wasn't just preaching the Word. You say, well, what do you mean, Chuck? He says, you just spent time talking about the fact that you just need to stay with the Scriptures. Well, that's true. But see, one of the dangers is, and, and, and you see it in the pulpits across the land, is people may be preaching truth, but they're not preaching all of it. Listen to what Paul went on to tell Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 2, Yes, preach the word. Then he said this, be ready in season and out of season. Well, what's that mean? Well, you preach it when it's popular and when it's not popular. You preach it when they like it and when they don't like it. See, there'll be people in, in, in pulpits across the land 
that are going to avoid certain subjects. I can remember somebody telling me, uh, a family member said they went somewhere and they were there for many years and never heard one sermon on authority. How do you establish it? There will be people that will go for a long period of time and never hear anything about a modest apparel or what the Bible teaches on divorce and remarriage. What does the Bible teach about homosexuality? What's the Bible teach about drinking and gambling and smoking? When's the last time you heard a sermon on gluttony? When's the last time you, know, you heard a sermon on anything that was controversial? Nobody wants to talk about that. When's the last time you heard a sermon about women's role in the church? You see, that's what we're going to be talking about. See, we're going to talk about worshiping God and preaching. The Bible teaches that men are to be the evangelist, that men preach. Now, is that popular? No, like Paul told Timothy here, you know, in season and out of season. And so what will happen in pulpits across the land, you might say to them, well, Chuck, they're not actually teaching error. Well, you know what? If they're not teaching on the whole oracles of God, if they're not teaching all the Word of God, then, then something's wrong. They're holding back and they're not teaching you everything that you need to hear. So not by not preaching on certain subjects so people don't get upset, you're not helping them. And that's not the kind of preaching you need. And you know what? They're, they're questioning your intelligence and they're questioning your faith. They're basically saying, you can't handle this. My disposition is, yeah, you can. And that you do want to hear it all. Your attitude is, Chuck, just tell me anything, but make sure it's from the Word of God. That's the kind of people that tune into this program every week. They're not afraid of getting their toes stepped on because their attitude is, if I'm wrong about something, that's good because then I must have found out what was right. But when you have people that are puffed up and arrogant and don't keep an open mind and they're not willing to study, then you run into all kinds of problems. So not preaching on subjects happens all the time. They won't preach on it. And we try to make sure that you're aware of that by bringing a lot of different things up from week to week on this television program. Uh, I'm going to come back to Timothy and finish up what Paul told Timothy, but I didn't want to leave you hanging. And sometimes when I get going, I forget to come back to uh, a point that I was talking about earlier. And, you know, Paul had mentioned the responsibilities of, of, of preaching. And when he was talking about who is to do it, he says in 1 Timothy chapter 14, he says, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. Paul, uh, he also says if they want to learn something, let them ask their husbands at home. Now, there are other passages that deal with this, but is that a subject that people want to talk about today? Does that make sisters in the Lord second-rate Christians? Of course not. There are things that they do um, that, to help with the work of the church. But as far as public preaching is concerned, Paul made it perfectly clear, especially when he was telling Timothy also. Um, that is not a, a responsibility for women. So when you come to a place to worship God and there's preaching, and if a woman gets up and preaches, that's not according to the Word of God. Somebody said, Chuck, are you saying they can't do it? Listen, people can do anything that they want. I'm not here to tell you, you can't do anything. You can do anything that you want. But if you're going to ask me, can I do anything that I want with God's approval? Well, the answer would be no. Now, let's get back to what Paul told Timothy. So, he told Timothy, preach the Word, be ready in season and out of season. Okay. And then he says, convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. You know, there are times you have to be very pointed in your preaching. You have to be perfectly clear. If you're going to help people change their ways, you have to be clear. And you have to point out the error of their way. And there are, at the same token, as he mentions here, you need to encourage people. You can't be negative all the time. If the only time you opened up your mouth as a parent to your child is to criticize, that's not going to help them. At the same token, if you're only going to compliment, even when they do something bad, they're going to have uh, an attitude of entitlement. 
that they never do anything wrong and that you're always going to bail them out. Well, you don't want that either. So preachers have a grave responsibility of making sure that there's balance in their preaching. And they need to point out the errors that are out there. And uh, there's because there's so much false doctrine that's being taught. Now, do people want to hear that? Well, let me tell you what Paul went on to tell Timothy. And Timothy, the preacher, needed to know this. He needed to know this. He went on to say in verse 3, he told Timothy, For the time will come when they, now the they that he's talking about there, are brethren, members of the church, the Christians. He says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They had been listening to sound doctrine, and they've been abiding in it, but there's going to come a time, well, they don't want it. And because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So he's telling Timothy, now Timothy, an act of worship is to preach the word. That is your responsibility. The hearers, your brothers and sisters in Christ, they want to hear sound teaching. But if you find yourself in a situation where people don't want to hear it, you keep preaching it. Now, one of two things are going to happen if you preach that word. They're going to take you out of the pulpit. And you won't be preaching there anymore. Or they'll, they, your listeners will leave. Because they want to get teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. As it mentions here, they have itching ears. And he's telling Timothy, don't be like that. And as listeners, don't you expect a preacher to do that. Don't you go to a place and want to be told only the good things because maybe you're being talked about here. Are you the type of person that says, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear anything negative. I don't want to hear you pointing the finger at error. I don't want you exposing false doctrine. Well, you know something? If you're that type of person, you would not have liked Jesus teaching where you go. Because you know what Jesus did? He exposed false teachers. And they didn't like it. Why do you think he was crucified? They wanted him gone. And they, they were also losing their, their influence and people were following Jesus and they didn't like that either. People get jealous. They get angry. They get, you know, full of hate. But keeping things in our perspective, when, when the church comes together, and we pointed that out in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 18, and 18, churches come together and they worship God. And one of the acts of worship is to have preaching. But the preaching needs to be sound preaching. And the preaching needs to be on all the oracles of God, all that the Bible has to say, so that you educate brethren so they don't sin, and so that they can teach other people also. You need to be an influence for good. Paul told Timothy that the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. And so you don't want to go to a place that teaches some truth. You want to go to a place where they'll teach all of it as truth. All the things that we need to know have been revealed here. And we need to stay with the Bible. You know, people say, Chuck, I go to a Bible-believing church. Well, I don't know. There's not too many not-believing Bible churches that are out there. But just because you go to a place that's a Bible-believing church doesn't mean everything is being taught. And you want to hear everything that is found within it. Preachers have a great responsibility of preaching the truth, but the problem is, the reason Timothy was told this is because some will give in to the pressures and want to be a man-pleaser. Paul had to make that clear to the brethren at uh, Galatia. So in Galatians chapter 1, he was upset with them. In verse 6, he says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. So you need to be listening carefully. And that's why people will call up and say, Chuck, what's the Bible teach about this? Because where I go, they teach this. My preacher taught this. Is that right? Because they, they want to check, and there's nothing wrong with checking and verifying if what they're teaching is true. Notice what he said down here in verse 10 of Galatians 1. For do I now persuade men or God? 
Do I seek to please men? If I still pleased men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now, I don't want people to hate me, but I'm not in it to be a man pleaser. If you don't like what's being taught, you just turn the channel. And people do that. I get that. I am to serve the Lord. I am to tell people what the Word of God says. But if you want to be a man pleaser, you're going to find people out there that will teach a certain way just to keep the paycheck coming. Somebody says, Chuck, what if where you go, they don't like what you teach and they want you to change your teaching? Then I'll leave. You see, I'm not, I am not to be preaching for the money. I'm not worried about that. I, my job is just to preach the truth. That's what I want to do. And your desire should be is to go to a place that worships God in spirit and in truth. Which means, they take the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. They sing. They just simply sing to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You give on the first day of the week what you purposed in your heart, not, a, not tithing. That's Old Testament. And you go to a place where they're going to have preaching. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, there's a couple of verses here that teaches us something that we need to remember when it comes to worship and it also pertains to the preaching. He mentions in verse 33, for God is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. And then he says in verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. I'm not going to jump on, I, I just seen it the other day on, on YouTube some preacher just jumping up and he jumps on top of the pulpit and he's acting crazy and running all around. Not going to do that. You see, I'm going to be mindful of visitors. Paul had mentioned that earlier, that if you act strange, he says, if an unbeliever comes into your midst, he's going to think you're out of your mind. So we think about our visitors. I don't want to preach above anybody's head. I just want to make the message clear and plain. And if they have questions, I want them to come to me. And if I taught something wrong, I want them to come to me. That should be our attitude. It's not my church, just my job. One of my roles is just to preach the Word of God. And so when brethren come together to worship, it's an act of worship. And I need to make sure, because I'm there worshiping God too, on Sunday with the, with the other Christians. And they're listening to the sermon, but I'm preaching the sermon. How, how much more do you think I need to make sure what I'm teaching is correct? Because it's my worship to God too. And I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm going to tell you, there are pulpits across the land, they put words in the mouth of our Lord, which he doesn't want anything to do with. You can just hear him say, I didn't say that. Just like you have in the last book, last chapter of John. You know, Jesus was credited with saying something that he did not say because people were not listening. And you need to be the person that respects the word of God and that you want to worship Him in a way that's pleasing to Him. So those are the five, uh, well, we've only looked at four. There's one more act of worship that we're going to deal with. It'll be our last lesson next week, so we hope you'll stay tuned. What is that one? I'm not going to leave you hanging. Another thing that the Christians did when they came together is they prayed. And we haven't talked about that one yet. And so I want to encourage you that if you have any questions about what we've talked about, maybe you've missed the other ones, the other three. Very important. And I can send you copies of those on DVD at no charge. That was last week's question. We don't solicit money from you. We just want to encourage you to learn the Word of God. That's why you call, please. Say, will you come to my home or will we meet at a, at a certain place? You know, for the last couple of months, we've been going to the Newburgh Library on Monday nights at 7 o'clock and Chick-fil-A on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock and meeting for an hour and dealing with Bible questions that people may have. Well, folks, other people are wanting classes and I'm going to be using those times, but perhaps I might be open. Now we're asking you to call. We're asking you to call if you want me to meet you at the library. We're asking you to call if you want me to meet you at the Chick-fil-A or any other place, or at your home, wherever it might be, please remember that phone number because we want to deal with your questions and help you learn what the Word of God has to say. So please keep that in mind. 
I'm not going to be at the library or Chick-fil-A unless somebody has texted me, called me, or emailed. Okay, the email is study the word at wowway.com. Please don't forget that email. And I'll be glad to go. I'm just trying to arrange my time because other people want classes. Matter of fact, one guy called up and said, can we have a class? I said, well, let's do it on Tuesday. And as soon as I hung up the phone, I went, oh no, I, I have committed to going to Chick-fil-A on Tuesday night. And so we had to change the date. But now I'm not going to commit to Monday and Tuesday at those places unless I get a phone call. And so if you're interested in a Bible class at any place, we hope that you'll give us a call. Folks, we want to remind you of our weekly radio program that airs uh, every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, 98.5 FM. We deal with Bible questions just like we do on this TV program. You can tune in there. You say, well, Chuck, uh, I'm out of the Newburgh, Evansville area. I can't pick it up. The signal isn't that strong. Well, you're right. The signal is not that strong. But the good news is, if you go to our website, you can scroll down and see where it says listen to uh, the radio program. Now, you have to go to our website at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoons in order to hear it. It's not saved in the archives like our preaching and teaching. When we stream our services, you don't actually have to watch them live. Um, you can come back and watch them anytime. They're all saved. All the TV programs, all the preaching and the Bible classes, they're saved. But the radio program, it's not safe. So you have to listen to it live at 2, between 2 and 2.30 on our website, or just tune, on, tune in on your radio, 98.5 FM. Folks, we offer a free um, six-lesson Bible study course. If you're interested in that, we can mail it to you at, at no cost. We hope that you'll be interested in, in taking that, cause, because you can do that in the comfort of your own home. And you work at it at your own speed. And uh, we'd love for you to, to take advantage of that. And we have a weekly bulletin that we mail out to people. we got a lot of people on the mailing list for that. It's a short sermon on paper. If you'd like a copy of that, please let us know. Just leave your name and your address, and I'll mail it out to you. We'll put you on the mailing list. So none of these things cost you anything. But folks, we'd really love for you to come and worship with us. Come and check us out. 5600 Van Road. Got to give you an idea of the time. It's just 10 minutes from I-69 once you come into Newburgh. Um, I've got a class in Slaughters, Kentucky. It's 45 minutes from there, so it's not that far. So wherever you might live, please feel free to come and drop by and visit with us, worship with us. You'd be our honored guest. You'd be under no pressure. If you don't have a Bible, we have one. We'll provide that for you and give it to you. We want to thank you for being with us. We hope you'll be back next time as we once again open up our Bibles and we will study the Word. Thank you. This has been brought to you by the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh. Have a good day.